Did you know that you hold the key to unlocking your cure to cancer? When our bodies encounter a pathogen, it initiates a cascade of events that works to eliminate the foreign material. A key fighter in this battle includes our T cells, which are immune cells that have very specific targets that endanger the body. However, this battle relies on the T cell's ability to find that specific invader. And in some cases, like with cancer cells, the invaders are able to avoid capture by the T cells. This is where CAR T cell therapy comes in. It falls under a branch of therapy known as adoptive cell transfer therapy, in which the patient's own immune cells are used to create a personalized treatment because sometimes our bodies just need a little bit of reinforcement. CAR stands for chimeric antigen receptor, and the therapy is currently being used in cancers like acute lymphocytic leukemia, lymphomas, and various blood cancers. But how exactly does this technique work? And are there any associated risks? In today's episode of McMaster's Demystifying Medicine, we're going to first look at what happens during a normal immune response to a foreign pathogen, how cancer cells are able to avoid capture by the immune system, how this novel technique actually works, and certain limitations of this technique, as well as the current research being done to address them. On to the actual technique, we need to go over some background information first. Under normal conditions, when the body encounters a dangerous pathogen, the immune system enlists the help of T cells and B cells. T cells and B cells are immune cells that fall under the category of lymphocytes, or white blood cells, and they work to clear the body of any harmful pathogens. When our bodies encounter foreign particles, we have cells known as antigen presenting cells that kind of act like the detectives of our body and they're able to find and identify these invaders. They then engulf them and break them up into tiny pieces. The detective cells then take one of these pieces and display them on their cell surface using something known as MHC molecules. Most cells express MHC on their cell surface and the T cells use these molecules to determine whether a cell belongs in the body or whether it doesn't. So a detective cell then presents an MHC complex to a naive T cell, as if it's giving them like a detailed police sketch. Naive T cells are like new police recruits who are still needing to be trained in how to find and catch the bad guy. So when the detective cells show the T cells the police sketch, it binds to the MHC complex, and this binding trains a naive T cell to recognize the MHC complex and that particular pathogen. At this point, the naive T cell has reached maturity and is now able to protect the body. When that T cell next encounters the pathogen, it binds to the MHC complex and it will know it needs to attack. Seems like a pretty flawless technique, right? So why can't they just do this with cancer cells? Well, cancer cells are a little more sneaky. They've managed to find a way to not get recognized by the T cells by hiding their MHC molecules to avoid detection. Cancer cells can also adapt by binding to T-cell receptors and giving the T-cells the instructions that they need to back down. They essentially throw in a disguise and pretend to be a friendly cell by expressing inhibitory antigens. These inhibitory antigens are proteins expressed on the surface of the cells that are able to elicit a response from immune cells, and in this case, it's telling the T-cells that their job is done and they can go home. All right, now that we've given you the background information, let's move on to the actual therapy. We've broken it down into five easy steps. The first involves drawing blood from the patients to isolate the T cells. The T cells are then engineered and exposed to viral vectors that carry the instructions on how to make the artificial receptors. These viral vectors are able to attach to the T cells and basically shoot in the genetic instructions. Once the T cells successfully express the receptor, they are multiplied in the lab and ready to be used. Sounds simple, right? Not exactly. A couple days before they can be infused into the patient, the patient must undergo something called a lymphodepleting chemical regimen. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, lymph refers to lymphatic cells or cells of the immune system, such as T cells, and we know what depleting means. It means to just reduce the number of something from its original amount. 
So lymphodepleting effectively means to reduce the number of T cells in the body. And we do this to make room for the new ones we've just created and are about to introduce. This ensures that the body will have the space it needs to start replicating these modified T cells as it sees fit. All right, now we can finally move on to in actually infusing these cells back into the patient. The patient is then monitored in their progress for the next few months. Now that we have explored how CAR T cell therapy works, let's go over some of the drawbacks. Because this is a relatively new area of research, there is still a lot left to figure out. One of the most significant drawbacks that is being addressed is its therapeutic efficacy. That is, the ability of CAR T-cell therapy to actually treat the cancer. Although cancer patients who have been treated with CAR T products have initially responded well, in some scenarios, the cancer cells have been able to come back. The reason this happens is that cancer cells are highly adaptable. The therapy targets the CD19 antigen, which acts as the Achilles heel of the cancer cell by leading to its downfall. The cancer cells see that they are being targeted at a very specific spot, and they protect themselves by hiding this antigen and decreasing its expression on their cell surface. This phenomenon is known as antigen loss, and is one of the most common reasons that cancer cells are able to persist after exposure to this treatment. Currently, researchers are looking into combating this issue by having the CAR T cells target two antigens at the same time. And this is in hopes to give the cancer cells a harder time with discovering their pattern of attack. Another limitation of CAR T cell therapy is the exposure to potentially threatening toxicity. As CAR T cells multiply, they can release large amounts of chemicals into the blood, and this can become quite toxic. This can cause side effects such as high fever and chills, trouble breathing, severe nausea, feeling dizzy, headaches, and muscle or joint pain. In some cases, this treatment can also affect the nervous system, resulting in a change in consciousness, confusion, seizure, or a loss of balance. Due to the potential risks of these side effects, adult patients are typically advised not to drive heavy machinery or do any other potentially dangerous activities for the several weeks after receiving this therapy. Another common barrier of this technique is its inability to target cancers that involve solid tumors. Solid tumors consist of large masses of cells that hide their antigens on the inside rather than express them on the cell surface. This is why treatments like CAR T cell therapy have a hard time eliminating these tumors because they rely on the binding of the antigens on the outside like with CD19. Not only that, but these tumors also surround themselves with an army of immune cells to avoid detection. However, researchers are looking into a protein that is commonly overexpressed in cells of lung and pancreatic cancers, and it may be a potential target for CAR T cells to bind to. This protein, called mesothelium, shows great promise with regards to treatments of solid tumors with CAR T cell therapy. All right, so we just covered quite a few limitations but CAR T-cell therapy developers remain undeterred as many new candidate therapies in clinical trials actually feature compelling new CAR designs and CAR T production processes. With the ongoing research, developers hope to see this therapy more widely used and to treat a variety of different cancer types. And with that, we reached the end of the video. Let's quickly go over what we've learned today. So we looked at what happens during a normal immune response, from the detective cells finding the pathogen to the new recruit T cells being trained to eliminate them. We looked at how cancer cells are able to avoid capture by decreasing the expression of MHC on their cell surfaces and by disguising themselves as non-threatening cells. We went over CAR T cell therapy and how it works. And we also covered certain limitations of the technique such as the antigen loss or the inability to treat solid tumors. And finally, we went over research being done to address some of these concerns. If you wanna learn more about this topic, feel free to click on the links in the description box below or go to the websites listed here. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next time.